You're All back. Right. Yeah. All right. Uh, morning. Uh, today is Daf Samach Tes Amud Aleph, or Daf Samach Tes. We're on the uh, the top of Amud Aleph. So we were discussing. We had a uh, we were discussing case of Shaygig. Uh, when is a person Chayv Achatos? He has to be Shaygig and something. So we had uh, we had the, uh, the the Shita earlier by by Munvaz. So he mentioned uh, there was we had Machlekes in the in the uh, in a Brisa before. So Machlekes in Munvaz in the Rabbanon uh, in terms of that. Um, so over there, Munvaz says, I'm just like over there, he says, Pater, in the case of a person did not know at all. A person did not know anything at all, he's Pater. So the question comes, so, and then we, we talk about the Rabbanon as to what they were shagig, um, what, they, what the shagig was. In other words, to be shagig, you had to have some sort of idea at some point, and then be unaware, or un- be, be unaware of the time of the Misa. So we said Munbaz, so they asked him, I, Munbaz, so he says, no, you need some, some sort of idea before. So they said, okay, well, if you need a idea before, why don't you need a, a idea during? So the Gemara so says, yes. And Echanami writes, that was the back and forth with Rabbi Kiva. So the, we are five lines from the top. So the Elo Munbaz Shiga Mai. So it says over there, Munbaz, what was his Shagig? In other words, if you're telling me that he was aware of his Avera, right? He knew that there were consequences and he was doing it anyways. So where was the Shagig? Right, the shogeg is means he, he was unaware, right? He's unknown. So where was the shogeg? El munda shigamai, kagon shishogu bekorbam. So he is a very mekel shita. So his shita is that he's aware you can't do it on Shabbos, right? He's he's aware you can't cook on Shabbos. He's aware that you're chayv misa, right? Or chayv karis. But he didn't know that if one does it accidentally, you're chayv korban. Okay, so that's his that's as far right, which is funny because. If one does doesn't know he, he does a bishogeg and the shogeg is not only the korban, so it's sort of it's, it's very circular. But anyway, the, if he doesn't know he is not aware of the halacha of a korban, that is called shogeg, despite the fact that he knows at the time he's doing the ma'isa, he knows I'm not allowed to cook on Shabbos, right? And shigas korban, uh, the rabban and the rabban would say that she is korban leishmei shiga. And the rabban would say no, 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 not knowing the korban is not called shogeg, right? If a person is aware you can't cook on Shabbos. And he just doesn't know, right? That there's carbonos, there's a carbon called the chatas that you bring, you do a shogeg, he's not aware of that. That's it's not considered to be shogeg. A person does it with that knowledge, that's considered to be amazing. So if that's the case, the rabbanon shigamai. So according to the rabbanon, what is shogeg according to the rabbanon? So they hold that obviously you have to have some point of unawareness. So what is he unaware about? So it's machlekas. So Rabbi Yechanan, Omar, Kevan Shishogeg, Bakaris. All right, so this is, I wouldn't have thought this, but Rabbi Yechan holds that according to the button, that it, he knows it's wrong. He knows you're not allowed to cook on Shabbos. However, he doesn't know that one is chayv karis for cooking on Shabbos. And that is called a shogeg. That is called, he's unaware, and therefore, he, once he, 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 uh, he uh, afterwards, he would have to bring a chatas for it, right? And then that was the opinion of Rabbi Yechan in the Rabbanon. And Reish Lakish Omar Ad Sheyishkog Belav the Kares. And Rabbi Yechon says, no. When it comes to cooking, the way to be shagig in cooking is not only he doesn't know there's Kares, but he doesn't know it's wrong on Shabbos. That's called shagig. So that might have been the classic way, which, which you know, all the time we discuss shagig and Shabbos, he doesn't know it's Asr, right? So that was only according to Reish Lakish, Lafid Rabbana. In other words, the guy is unaware that there's a Kares, and he's also unaware that it's Asr. He doesn't know that one is not allowed to go ahead and cook on Shabbos. Now, Omar Rava says, Rava, my time of the Rishim and Lakish, the Rishim and Lakish. What is the reason according to Rish Lakish? Why does Rish Lakish, uh, where do we see that? So, Amar Kar, the Pasuk says, Asher lo'i ta'asena. So, the Pasuk says, in uh, Vayikra, Dalit, it says over there, Asher lo'i ta'asena. Right now, it's talking about something that one is not supposed to do, and he does it inadvertently. The Yashe, right? And then he's, he's done wrong. So, ad sheyishkog balav, it means over there that he does something that he had no idea, right? He does something that he is, that, that the entire thing that he was not supposed to do, he was unaware of. In other words, so he has to be completely unaware of the action that is forbidden. In other words, he not only has to know that there's no car race, he, he, he couldn't have even known that it was forbidden, Right, Ajishka Balav the Karish Shaba. Right, until he's unaware, and he, he right, he's unaware of both the lav and the karis. Rabbi Yechran, 
And what would Rabbi Yechanan say? So, hi, Kro, the Rashid Ben Lakish, my Abi. So, according to Rabbi Yechanan, so this puzzle that Rabbi Yechanan uses in my Abi, what does he use it for? Me, but they actually use it for something else. The Kitatani learning a Bryce that says over there, Mi'amar, it's, it says over there in terms of a person who has to go ahead and bring a carbon. It says, Mi'amar, it's <coughs> from, a, from a person of the land, one of the people of the Jewish people. So, who does that come to exclude? Prala Mumar, that excludes a Mumar. That excludes a, a, a basically a, a person who is a sinner, right? He's uh, he's no longer shomer Torah mitzvahs, right? He's a renegade, right? So that such a person is not considered to be a chay v'chat. He wouldn't be a chatas because it only says somebody of the people, but he's no longer of the people. And the, and Rabbi Shimon Alazar Omer and Rabbi Shimon Alazar says no, Rabbi Shimon Rabbi Shimon, Asher. He uses this pasuk. This he uses the pasuk of Asher Latias. And in other words, there was something he wasn't supposed to do, right? And he did it accidentally. The Ashem, right? And, and therefore he sinned. So. Uh, Pasuk is mashma, Hashem yidi aso, midi korban. Only someone who had he known that it was aser, he, he wouldn't have done it, right? That person, was, uh, uh, that person may be korban, Hashem yidi However, lo yisham yidi aso, but even if you told him, hey, by the way, you're not allowed to cook on Shabbos, and the guy says, I don't care, I don't follow the Torah, then such a person ain't a midi korban, Hashem yidi aso. Such a person would not bring a korban out for his sugar. In other words, so it, really, they both say the same thing. The, just Rabbi Shem, uh, Rabbi Yech, um, Actually, um, and uh, one second, and Rabbi Yechanan, um, so we use this pasuk for, for something else. In other words, so Rabbi Yechanan uses this pasuk to teach you basically that a mumar does not go ahead and uh, bring a carbon because such a person has to be somebody who would refrain once he knows that it's forbidden. And uh, uh, Reish Lakish used that pasuk to teach us that no, that um, Rish Lakish used the pasuk to teach us that a person has to be completely unaware that so, that doing that that which he's about to do is, is forbidden to do, and also that there, that carries a karis, then that is called the shogeg. Fine. So tonight, now let's analyze and let's see if we can find a proof one way or another in terms of the sheet of the rabbanon. So tonight we're going to the mishnah. Abos achas. We learn later on. When we start listing the malachas. We said there are thirty nine, right? Forty minus one. There are thirty nine malachas when it comes to Shabbos. And the answer there, why do you need a number, right? If it's 39, 29, 50, who cares, right? Right, that if a person does all of them in one point of right, uh, being unaware, right, then he is chayiv for each and every one. You know, he can be chayiv up to a total of 39 chatas for one moment of unawareness. The question is, so what's the case? Right, Shabbos, the Shigas Malachas. In other words, he knows it's Shabbos. He knows today is Saturday, the day of rest, and he's Shaygeg, but he's unaware. He's Shaygeg uh, in the Malachas, each individual Malacha, the 39 Malachas. Now, now we have to understand this according to either, let's see how Rabbi Yechan and Rabbi would understand it. So, Rabbi Yechan and Rabbi Yechan, I understand according to Rabbi Yechan who was the first opinion explaining the Rabbanon, who holds that as long as somebody doesn't know, know it carries a karis, okay? If someone doesn't know it carries a karis, then that's called shogig. So it's fine. The guy knows about Shabbos, right? He knows today is Saturday, right? He knows today is Shabbos, and he knows that one can't cook, but he, he has, he's completely unaware that cooking on Shabbos is chayv karis. So, and, and it has to do with all those malachas. So therefore, he can be chayv all 39 malachas, according to, uh, according to Rabbi Yechan, right? He can go on the other day with Shabbos. Belav, he knows about that it's forbidden to do on Shabbos, but he doesn't know about the Karis. El, Rabbi Shimon ben Lakish, but according to Rabbi Lakish, Domar, Ad, Sheish, Gung, Belav, Karis, according to Rabbi Shimon Lakish, what is called a Shogeg? Only something that he has, he cannot know about the Karis, and he also doesn't know it's Asr. Do Yadile the Shabbos? So if he sees, oh, so we say over there, in Rabbis, he knows it's Shabbos, he just doesn't know it's forbidden. Okay? So how does he know about Shabbos if he doesn't know that you can't do any of these 39 things? What does he know about Shabbos? Right? He doesn't know you can't cook. He doesn't know you can't uh, plant uh, this, that. He doesn't know anything about Shabbos. He doesn't know about any malachas. So what does he know about Shabbos? So uh, my idea. So what does he know? So my answer is, B'tchum and Aliba the Rabbi Kiva. He holds, no, Shabbos is the day of rest. How do we rest? But we tchum, right? We don't go outside the tchum. We don't travel too far. And according to Rabbi Kiva, who holds, that it is a duraisa. So in other words, to him, Shabbos is the day of rest. How is one resting? I have no idea. never heard that you can't do any malacha. I just heard that you can't travel far from your home. Fine. So that was that case, and therefore it's not necessarily a kasha or uh, a proof uh, for Rabbi Yechan or Rabbi Shlakish. Now, 
Man Tana Loha, who taught this one? The Tana Rabbanon, Shagig Bezevazeh. If a person was Shagig both on Shabbos, he was unaware that today was Saturday, he thought uh, he was mixed up, um, he thought it was, um, uh, whatever, he thought it was a weekday, uh, and then he, um, and then he also he's unaware that he that that what she's doing is forbidden. I was that is that a shaga over Torah? This is the shaga that's referring to the Torah. So hey, busy, hey, If a person knows that it's today Saturday, knows it's wrong. So he made it home over Torah. That's what what's made the classic made the case in Torah. Now shaga b'shabbos hazy b'malachos. Oh, she shaga b'malachos hazy b'shabbos. Now if he's unaware that today is Saturday. But he knows that you know, you know, he knows you're allowed to cook. He knows you can't cook on Saturday. He just thinks today is Friday, or vice versa. He knows today is Saturday, but he has no idea that it's forbidden to go ahead and cook. Oh, Sha'amar, Yodea ani shemalacha zuasur. I know I'm not allowed to do this. Well, any Yodea shachayv in a carbon alone. But I have no idea that if one would do this b'shogeg, I would be chayiv a carbon. Chayiv. So he is chayiv. So Gemara says, "Come on, who is this like?" This is Kamungaz. This is the opinion of Mungaz. Right? Mungaz was the one who argued with, with Rabban in the beginning. Mungaz was the most right, makel extreme to say that shogay can even be a case. I, I know it's forbidden, and I know it carries a karis, but I don't know that, 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 that you have a karma. So such a case, that's called shogay, right? If you're uh, unaware of the halachas, right, that you bring a karma, therefore that is, uh, that is still considered to be shogay, and that would be the opinion of this, this Bryce, and that would be the opinion of Mungaz. Oh, could Amr you explain Abai. the wait? Could you explain yeah. the opinion of uh, the Rabbanin again for what okay. they consider to be shogeg? Right. So, so the way the brisa works is that this is the machloikas. We talk about shogeg. Person has to be shogeg has to be unaware. So, how do you do? What type of unawareness? Because if you say that you never heard of Shabbos before in your life, like the t- case of Tinuk Shneish, we were discussing yesterday. So, mm-hmm. if you discuss the case where you never heard of Shabbos in your life, that's not called shogeg. That's called nothing. Right, that's you're not high because you never knew, right? So what is the case of shogig, right? What is the case of, of shogig? So they want to say, so as my colleagues, our say that. Um, uh, so what does he not know about? So according to there's my colleagues in the rabbanon, according to Rabbi Yechanan, who is the first opinion, Rabbi Yechanan said that if the guy is aware that it's usher, but he doesn't know it carries a penalty of parents, that's called not knowing. That's called shogging. That's called being unaware. Mm-hmm. Therefore, if you do an Avera, according to Rabbi Yechanan, the Fidu Rabbanan, if you do an Avera with not knowing the severity of the consequence, that's called shogging. And therefore, you'd be a chai v'chatas. Right? So the guy wasn't learning. He knew, okay, I heard that it's wrong to cook on Shabbos, but I didn't know that it's wrong to go ahead and that it carries with it a kares penalty. Therefore, that would be something that he, he would still be a korban chatas for. And, and then Reish Lakish says, no, 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 no. If you know that it's usser, even if you don't know the severity, that's called doing it on purpose because you knew it was wrong. What is a shogeg? A shogeg is you didn't know it was wrong. You didn't know you're not allowed to cook on Shabbos. So they're arguing as to whether the person it realizes that that which he's doing is wrong. All right? Does that help? Uh, yeah. I, I, that last uh, part, uh, the, the, the son of Rabbanu, Right, so that was another Bryce, and we just wanted to figure out who the author was, and that was Moonbaz, who holds that to him, not knowing about something could even be that you didn't know it carries a penalty of a korban. Korban. And, and, and even that is called not knowing, right? Which could be very common, right? If someone goes to Hebrew school, yeah. this and that, or, you know, you go to day school, That's and you it. just, you don't know, you don't always pay attention. Oh, I didn't know that, the, you know, the, you bring a korban for doing the that, that would be called shoge, right? That's called, you're unaware. Fine. Let's see. Mm-hmm. Gemara says, uh, as we said, Mungaz. Amar Abayi. Hakol mo'yidim b'shvuas bitui. Now let's talk about shvuas bitui. Shvuas bitui, there's two ways we'll soon see. A uh, base person makes the shvuas. Person says shvuas, I will go ahead and eat, or I won't eat. Guy says, I'm getting fat during quarantine. I will not eat brownies today. All right? She'ein chayvin ala korban ad she'yishkog b'lov shiba. He's not a chayv korban until he, right, uh, until he's shogeg, right, about his, his um, uh, until he's shogeg about his shvua. In other words, he makes a shvua, I'm not going to go have them brownies later on today because I'm fat. And then later on, when the time comes three o'clock, 
and he forgot he made the shvua and then he ate the brownies. That is called, he knows he has to wait until that point. That he has to forget about that it was prohibited for him to eat the brownies. So, so it says over there, hakol moedim. Everybody agrees. So usually when that lashon of hakol moedim is inclusive. So who are we coming to include? Everyone agrees. Uh, who's everybody? Who are you including that normally don't include? So hakol chavin, saman, who is that? Rabbi Yechran. That would be the opinion of Rabbi Yechran. Why? Because Rabbi Yechran earlier, remember, said, even though the guy knows it's usher, but he doesn't know the severity, that's called by accident. Over here, we're saying there's no, right? It has to be completely, right? He has to, he can't know that it's forbidden to eat, as opposed to the case we have by Shabbos, where he knows it's forbidden, he just didn't know the severity. So even Rabbi Yochan would agree in this case that he can't know it's also to eat the brownie. So Goran says, Pshit, that's obvious. Between Rabbi Yochan and Shlokish, of course, Rabbi Shlokish says by Shabbos, why wouldn't you think Rabbi Yochan? So he says, no, Kikama Rabbi Yochan, hey, Kadi, Kikaris. Maybe Rabbi Yochan holds normally. That in a case where there's kares like Shabbos, and he is unaware of that, about hey, like a kares, but there is no kares in Shabbos, lo. Maybe you think that, uh, 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 that you are not, right? So Goran says, no, so, so now it's, it's explaining the kasha, right? And now it's obvious because over here there's no kares. So obviously that there's nothing for him to, to not know about. So obviously if, if there's knowing something, he, he can't know whether or not his cars because no car race with it so as long as he knows it's forbidden it would be the same thing so of course rabbi yochan would agree in other words rabbi yochan his shagag is that he wasn't aware that he made a shu on these brownies so the gemara explains what's happening so, since by the fact that a person is chayv carbon now mostly carbonos we deal with the case a person does something car race if he does it b'shogeg, then he's chayv a chayv a carbon but over here, in a case of a shvua, right? But the korban you bring a shvua is there, there is no kares. Nevertheless, you have to bring a korban. So since that's a chiddush, how do have korban chiddush? It's a chiddush. The bechol atara kul ashkan lav demaisi that korban. We don't find anywhere where there's a lav, right, that carries with it a punishment of a korban or when a one is bringing a korban. The hachel maisi, right? And over here, he would have to bring a korban. Kishay of a korban nami lechay. Maybe you think that this. Maybe the guy knows I'm not allowed to eat brownies. But I didn't know that if I brought, if I ate brownies accidentally, I would have to bring a carbon, right? So in other words, maybe that's the shogig, and maybe he would say in this case. So maybe th- th- we're coming to include that. So Kamash Milan, then know that that is not the case. In other words, even if you're unaware of the, uh, of the carbon, that doesn't make a difference. You have to be unaware that eating the brownie is us, sir. Kamash Milan, not like that. And therefore, it would be basically, um, it was the opinion of Rabbi Yechna. So Mesave, top of the page in Samach Tasman Bays, Ezu Shigas Shivuas Bitui, Lishavar. So what is the case of Shivas Bitui Lashavar? In other words, we have a case of where a person swears about the past. Now, if you swear about something in the past, and let's say he says, you know, I swear I didn't eat the hamburger last night. Okay. Now, if he is aware that he ate the hamburger, okay, so that is amazing, right? But if he completely thinks that he didn't, right, that would be an einis. So, so that, that's an accident. Now, he wouldn't be chayv. So what's the case of shagging backwards? Ezer shigaz shavuaz bitui, the shavar. Shim omar yoideyani shavuazu asura. That he knows that really this, one is not allowed to go ahead and falsely swear about something that he did or did not do. Well, any yoideyim chayvin la karban. I had no idea that if he, if, he, if he did go ahead and violate it, he would have to bring a karban. Alo. Chayv, he would be chayv. So Hamani, whose opinion is this? This is Munbasi. This is the opinion of Munbasi, because Munbasi, as we said earlier, it says the person has to know full well about the halachas of the prohibition, including to the point that one brings a karban. So if he doesn't know about the karban, that is considered to be shoigeg enough where he would be chayve karban. So let's skip the parentheses. Now the Gemara moves a, a, a little easier. Actually, one more case. Omar Abaye, hakol maidin betruma. Now when we talk about truma, right? Truma is given to the Kohanim. Uh, cannot be eaten by uh, by non kohanim. So, and a person goes ahead and eats uh, truma, then he has to go ahead and tack on a one fifth, right, and give it to the uh, you know you know to the owner of whoever's truma it was. Now, it has to be shagig, right? So it has to done. You know, if he does b'meizid, he's chayiv misa b'dei if a, if a non kohen goes and eats the truma, it's chayv misbede shemayim, right? Not kares, it's a little different. Misbede shemayim, similar, but he uh, misbede shemayim. If he does it accidentally, then he repays him plus tax on a fifth, a chaymish. Now, 
So we say here by Chuma Hakoma, Yidim Bechuma, Shein Chayvin Lechemesh, Ad Sheish Gogolav Shabo, until he is unaware that there was a lav. Now he thought it was chulin. He thought it was chulin. He ate it, right? And all of a sudden he becomes aware. Oh, there wasn't chulin. It's chuma. Then he goes out and paid. So hakol ma'idim. Everybody agrees this case. Once again, who does hakol ma'idim come and include? Saman hakol ma'idim. Saman. Rabbi Yechran. So he says, no. It is the opinion of uh, Rabbi Yechran. So he says, right? So Gorin says, what, what, what do you mean you tell me, Rabbi Yechran? Now, Rabbi Yechran says, e- even though normally a person has. Uh, even if he knows it's usr, it can still be a shaggy as long as he doesn't know the penalty. So, of course, we're coming to include Rabbi Yechran. Rabbi Yechran comes to include, even in this case, he has to be completely unaware that it was forbidden to go ahead and, and, and eat it. He, you know, he has to think it was chulun, not shuma. So this is Rabbi Yechran, pshita, kiyama Rabbi Yechran, hey, chadik, the karis. Now, is that what Rabbi Yechran says? You have to know about the karis penalty. It's only where there is karis. Hey, chadik, like a karis, low. But if there's no karis, you would have to be required to know about it. So, obviously, he has to know that there's nothing he can know about. He has to think that it's mutter. So Malatim Oja said, Maybe he said like this, just like in the case of Shabbos, he says, if you know that it's usher to do, but you, does, but you don't know there's a karis, that's still called shogeg. Maybe in this case, you know it's usher to eat truma, if you're a non kohen but you didn't know that it carries a misa b'nei shemayim penalty. And that was a, the two are in a, a, exchangeable, right? You can exchange one from the other. So therefore, if he's if he knows it's usher to go ahead and eat chuma, but he didn't know that it was us that it carries a, a misa b'nei shemay penalty. So kamash Balan, not like that, right? Kamash Balan, we say no, that nothing to do with that. The misa penalty is the knowing of the misa penalty is not the same as knowing of the kares, and therefore even Rabbi Yechon would agree in this case that he can't know that it was mutter at all. And Rav Omar, and Rav says misa actually argues. He says no misa b'makom kares omedas. That really, if you don't know about misa, it's the same thing. And by, uh, by misa the truma is the same thing. If you don't know by kares, in the case of Shabbos. And Rabbi Yechon will go to Shitaso. And Rabbi Yechon will say, just like by Shabbos, if he doesn't know about the Kares, it's called Shogig. So too by Truma, if he doesn't know about the Misa Be'i Shemayim, it's called Shogig. And the Chaymesh will come Karban Kai. And the Chaymesh is replaced with the Karban. In other words, by Truma, right, there's no Karban you bring if you have it, right? So the, 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 you tack on the fifth, you do that when it's Shogig. Just like by Shabbos, you, give, you bring a Chatas when it's Shogig. So too, by Truma, you, you pay back the one-fifth when uh, also uh, in the case of Shogun. Fine. Now, two dots. Now it gets a little easier. Amar Rav Huna. Hayo mahalech b'midbar ve'eni yadeh emesai Shabbos. A guy, he's in quarantine, right? I just started watching the, um, the, the Netflix special on the, the Unabomber, right? I was watching about the Unabomber. So he lived out in the woods. He had no electricity, no nothing. So one time he mentioned he went to his neighbor's house to ask what day it was and what time it was. So he completely oblivious to the day and time. So a guy was walking in the Midbar in the desert, and he doesn't know, right, when Shabbos, right? He knows there's Shabbos. He doesn't know when Shabbos is, right? He counts six days. And on the seventh day, he'll keep it as his Shabbos. And Chia Barab Oimer, Neshamer Yoim Echad, keep one day Shabbos. Then you go ahead and count six more days, and then you do Shabbos again. So six to one, and the other one says one to six. Or you do count six, then you do your one Shabbos. That one says you do your one Shabbos, count to six. My, what's the machlag? I said, my kinifugi. So my sabbat kabriyasa shalalam. One holds like the creation of the world. The world was created in six days. Six days do your work, and the seventh day was rest. So to over here. Well, my seventh, the second opinion was Adam Rishon. Like Adam Rishon, right? Adam Rishon was created on Friday. So his first day was Shabbos. So you, you don't know which day it is. Tomorrow will be you'll observe Shabbos, and then you do six days afterwards, just like other Marisha. So Meis Vayase Kasha Hayom Mahalich B'Derech Ve'Ne Deim Eimes Sayv Shabbos. The guy was walking in the in the in the, in the, in the, in the road and doesn't know when Shabbos is. So or what what what, what day is Shabbos? So Meshami Yoy Mechal the Shisha. Right, he counts one to six. So my love, my Nashisha Meshami Yoy Mechal is not telling us that you count. Basically, you count six days and then you do one. It says low. No, maybe in the other way, Mishmar, yeah, maybe you, you watch one day, you do one day of Shabbos, and then you count six afterwards. See, Hachi, if that's the case, Mishamar, Yaim, Echa, Lishisha, right? If that's the case, should it have said, right, the way it read is, right, he, he keeps one day <clears throat> to six. Mishmar, Yaim, Echa, Umayna, Shisha. It should have said he keeps one day and then counts six, right? But by the fact it says he keeps one day, right? And uh, one day to six sounds like he does six days and one. All right, me, uh, me boy later. Oh, and Tanya, furthermore, we have another Bryce that says, Favorish, Hayom Halach Baderach, Abamid Barbain, a day of Shabbos, 
the guy was walking in the way <clears throat> on the road or in the desert. <clears throat> he doesn't know when Shabbos is, so he counts six days. And then he goes ahead and keeps Shabbos. So Tiyufta the Chia Barav Tiyufta. So Tiyufta the Chia Barav who says that you keep one six, rather you keep six and one. And Amar Rava says that Rava, by the way, the Chol Yom V'Yom Oiselo Kedei Panasaso. Every day you can only go ahead and work that what you need for that day. Why? Because really every day is a Suffolk Shabbos, right? Every day might be every day might be Shabbos. So we don't want you to go ahead and do work, right? For other days, just whatever work you're doing is only for your survival of that day, right? So except for that day that he's observing Shabbos, right? In other words, we say you count six days and the seventh day, don't work. So he goes, I vo yoyma limos. What, should he die in the seventh day? What's he going to do? How's he going to survive? So he says, no, David may as well stay So the day before he works, you know, double to make sure he has enough food for the next day. I but don't matter Shabbos happy. But maybe yesterday was Shabbos. And now basically Shabbos, you're not only doing enough to survive, you're doing enough to survive for today and tomorrow, which would be Sunday, right? So how could you go ahead and do double portion on your, you know, you know, your make-believe Friday if that Friday actually could be Saturday? So Ella called So rather each and and every single day, you you do what is needed for that day, even on the Shabbos. And the Gemara says, um, So the Gemara says, if that's the case, and that day, so how is he recognizing Shabbos? So he says, you know, count six days and observe Shabbos. But if every single day you're doing enough work just to eat for that day, so how are you observing Shabbos, right? What, what type of Shabbos is, is uh, observing? So by saying Kiddush and Havdalah, you say on that day. But in terms of Malacha, every day you only do for that day. Therefore, it'll prevent you from doing Malacha on, uh, uh, for, on Shabbos for another time. If a guy realizes, right, on the the day, right, that he what's it called that he um, that he left, okay, if he knows what day it is. In other words, let's say he knows this was definitely the same day I left last week, okay. It was definitely been seven days. I don't remember. So that day he is allowed to go ahead and do work. Why? Because people, he wouldn't leave on a trip on Shabbos. So obviously if it's a week later, whatever weekday that was, right? Whatever day of the week that was, I can go ahead and, you know, do malacha today. Because today is going to be a day where, um, um, you know, it, it was not Shabbos. Because I know seven days ago, I was, I, you know, I was traveling. So God says, Pshita, it's obvious. So what would you, what's the Chiddush here? So what would you say? Came in the Shabbos, lay nothing. Malin the Shabbos, not lay nothing. So maybe like this, just like you wouldn't travel and leave for your voyage on Shabbos, you also wouldn't start going ahead and leaving on Friday, right? People don't leave on Friday; they don't go on trips. So maybe if I know that today is definitely not Shabbos because today is is the what's it called? Is the day I left? I also know the day before today, right? Since I was traveling on this day, also the day before today of the week would also be mutter because I wouldn't have left on Friday. So maybe I would have two days. Of every seven day cycle, I would have two days that would be mutter for me to go ahead and do as much malach as I want. And therefore, if it was, uh, you know, if it was the, uh, the, the, what's it called? If it was the Thursday, right? He would go, he, he, only then he would go out. So, therefore, he would be able to go ahead and do malach for two days. So, Kamash Malan comes to teach you Sometimes maybe there's a caravan that's, only, that's leaving only on Friday. And it's not, uh, you know, that it goes from town to town. And obviously they would, you know, he would get there on time. But perhaps a person would leave if, you know, something, there's a caravan or something that's leaving on that day. Fine. So two dots. So the Yedea Ika Shabbos. So we mentioned before in the Mishnah, sort of, you know, going back to what we discussed earlier. Uh, when it came to our Mishnah, we, the first case in the Mission was the guy does many malachas on many Shabbosim. He only has to bring one. Right, we talked about a case of that was a machlekas, whether the person knew about Shabbos at all, never heard of it, or he once knew about Shabbos and completely forgot about it. That's the case he brings one. And then there's another case of where he does many malachas or many Shabbosos, and he brings a karban for every Saturday, every Shabbos that he violated. It doesn't matter how many malachas he did, but any different Saturday that he did malachas, then he would have to bring a karban chatas specifically for that day. 
And we explained that was a case of where he knew uh, basically everything was Shabbos, but his calendar was off. He had the wrong day of the week. So, how you doing, Shabbos? So, Menachem Mili, so where do you know this from? So, Amar Rav Nachman, Amar Rav Hua, Trey Kraiksi. Right? There's two psukim, right? Because one time it says you bring one korban for all the Shabbos. And the other one says you bring korban for each and every Shabbos. Every Shabbos needs a korban. So one Pesach says, B'Shomru B'nei Yisrael says Shabbos, right? The B'nei Yisrael would be showing me as a Shabbos, which is one day. V'ksiv, as Shabbos I teach Maru, right? And you observe my Shabbos, right? Plural, two of them. Okay, so how is that so? B'Shomru B'nei Yisrael Shabbos. B'Shomru B'nei Yisrael says Shabbos is the first one. Shmira Achaz, the Shabbos is Harbi, right? It says, right, it's one Shmira for every Shabbos, right? One Shabbos, in other words, you only do one Shmira, and it covers everything. So therefore, that would be, that's hinting to the case of we can be one Korban for multiple Shabbos, that's Shabbos I teach Maru. And observe my Shabbos. Shemirah has a call Shabbos Shabbos. Each and every Shabbos has its own Shemirah. And therefore, if I violate that, I have to bring a, a separate carbon for each and every Shabbos. So Masav Rav Nachman Rav Yitzchak, he says, Ad Rav, Yitzchak Mestavar, you can say the opposite. Rishon B'nei Yitzchak is a Shabbos. Shemirah has a call Shabbos for Shabbos. Maybe that means one Shemirah for each and every single Shabbos. But even each and every single Shabbos is its own. Right, that Shabbos tidy Shmeru, and then it says that my my Shabbos is a wash. Shmeru Achas the Shabbos is Harbe. Maybe means my Shabbos watch. In other words, all the Shabbos watches one. It sounds like maybe there's a one Shmeru for all the Shabbos, and therefore if I'm Chayiv, then I have to bring it one. So in other words, the 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 the, the Gemara here was just bringing cases of where we would say that, uh, you know, the hints in the Torah as to bringing one carbon for multiple Shabbosim or bringing a carbon for each and every Shabbos. And that was using from the word from Shabbos or Shabbos And we'll stop here at the two dots on the bottom line. All right, everyone have a wonderful day. Shkaya. Shkaya. Enjoy. Shkaya.